All right, good evening everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Devotions. Good to be with you. What a week it's been. For some, it's probably been a very long week. And you're probably glad that the week is over and the weekend is about to start. And with that thought in mind, remember to keep your services in prayer. Brother Clive, good evening to you. Sister Kim, if she's there or watching later, good evening. Uh, remember to keep your services in prayer. Tracy, good evening. Sue Ellen, good evening. Uh, be praying for um, for your service. Be praying for the Lord to meet with the Lord for a move of the Spirit. However you want to pray, we need the Lord to be present in our services for sure. Now, if you can hear some crunching going on in the background, <laughs> that's the dog. <laughs> The dog has found something plastic that he's chewing on. Sorry about that. It's all go. All systems are go. But be praying for your services. That would be a blessing. I do hope and pray you've had a decent week, a good week, and uh, looking forward to uh, the weekend ahead. All right, let's go to, uh, if you're following in the scriptures, Luke 22, Luke 22. Let me just oh, move that a little bit there. We'll go to Luke 22. How far... Are you willing to go or how far are you prepared to go and what will it take to stop you? How far are you willing to go and what will it take to stop you? Now, I've been talking to some folks and uh, who have been sharing with me some goals that they have set, more to do in the lines of physical. Uh, Brother Cameron was sharing with me about a goal that he has to, when it comes to walking. He wants to be able to walk from his house to Point Cartwright and back. And if you know the Sunshine Coast at all, you may not. Uh, but that's a fair hike. But that's a great goal. That is a really good goal to have. And uh, I was I wanted to encourage him with that. Um, some of you might have uh, another goal. It might not be a physical goal that you've set. It could be a goal in, I want to read through the New Testament. Judy, good evening. Or I want to read through this book of the Bible. Or I've, I've, I've got a, a, a Christian book that I want to, Make sure I get through. Or you've set yourself a goal to read X amount of Christian books. It could come in many different ways. So what will it take to... How far are you willing to go or what will it take to stop you? Now, I've set myself a goal just in this last week. In the last four days, I extended my walking. And you all know how much I love walking. I was so overrated. But anyway, I take the dog, I stick my earplugs in and we go walking. But I've extended the walk. I've pushed myself to go further and just you know not just dawdling but to be walking and uh, going up those hills and all that sort of stuff how far are you willing to go? and i tell you what the temptation to, to the temptation to quit before you even start is real i mean you know it's like oh you know you did it yesterday just have a break today i tell you the the thoughts that go in your mind is like well you know you you read five chapters in the bible yesterday just read one robin rachel good evening um you know what i mean so the the temptation to stop before you even start or the temptation to you know you get to a certain point and the old thoughts kick in it's ah like, oh, you know you've gone far enough just head back home you know what i mean how far are you willing to go? That thought came to me this morning as I was reading in Luke 22. Luke 22, Jesus is on the eve, if you please, of his crucifixion. It's just around the corner. Brother John, good evening. And uh, what Jesus does is he, he wants to prepare to eat the Passover. He sends uh, James and John, Pastor James, good evening, he sends James and John out into uh, the streets there to find a place and gave him direction. And when you see this and that, you know, uh, let the owner of the house know that the, the Lord has need of the house and Satan enters into Judas and, you know, they have the Lord's Supper there and there's a few other things that he teaches. But he makes a statement as he gazes into the eyes of the 11 that are sitting there with him sitting around that table, having the Lord's Supper, the first supper, Jesus teaching them, he stares or gazes into their eyes and he makes this statement in verse number 28, Luke twenty-two twenty-eight. 28. He says this, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. 
In other words, he's saying, you, you guys, you, you guys, you never left me, you never forsook me, uh, you were always there for me. When we talk about the temptation, you, know, you were there for me in my, in my darkest hour, you were there with me when I was going through my difficulties. Because if I was to think about the word temptation, or as it says here in Luke, temptations, if I was to give some one word definitions of it, it would be it would be this. It would be uh, uh, pressures. I've no doubt that when temptations come upon you, there's pressure to sin. I would say hardship. I would say difficulties or even attacks. You think about the temptations that Jesus experienced through his earthly ministry, the temptation to a, not go to the cross, the temptation to, to uh, be exalted as king before the time, all these sorts of temptations, the difficulties, the pressures that Jesus experienced in his earthly ministry, fully God, fully man, the things that he experienced, he said, ye are they that continued with me in my temptations. You didn't leave me. You, 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 you've gone all the way with me, so to speak. You know, when we think about that, we're, we're talking about their roller coaster ride with the Lord Jesus. And I guess that would be a good way to explain their life walking with Jesus. It's a, a roller coaster ride. Most of us understand the concept of a roller coaster, the ups and downs, uh, the twists and turns, uh, the joy, the, the screaming, the, the, the fun, the excitement, the fear, all these things that we think about. When it comes to the roller coaster. And so when you think about the life of the Lord and these disciples that followed with him, it was nothing short of a roller coaster ride. Now, as we talk about the disciples then, what about the disciples now? And I talk about you and I. How far are we willing to go with the Lord? Uh, uh, what would it take to stop us? Are we, are we willing, even in our day, to continue with him through his temptations even? Uh, you know, when we think about the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, he's not really a popular figure today. You know what I mean? He would be probably one of the most looked at people in the sense that looked at when you think of Greek Orthodox or the Roman Catholics or painters and so on. There's a lot of images, and most, if not all of them, are wrong. But you understand what I'm saying? He would have been the most looked at person, but not the most seen. And so when you think about Jesus today, he, he probably would be someone who is looked at a lot, but he's not welcomed. He's not really embraced today. And of course, we see that when we witness for Jesus and so on. But, you know, when we go through our times of temptations with Jesus, what would it take to stop us? Would we continue with him during these temptations? Brother John, good evening. Uh, you know, to continue is a good thing. Uh, Paul talks to Timothy and he talks about in the last days that evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. But he says, but continue thou. Despite the temptations continue, despite the, uh, the period of hardship and difficulties and pressures of life, that, that, that the temptations that are all wrapped up in that to, to quit, to give up, to, to just abandon ship, abandon hope. I'm not saying you lose your salvation. We believe in the eternal security of the believer. But, but just, to, just to quit and just, oh, I'm just want to sit and have a rest now you know what I mean I'm fed up with facing all this stuff what would it take to stop us from continuing with Jesus in our life for some it wasn't that much hold your place here in Luke I want you to go with me to John chapter 6 in John's gospel there were those that that couldn't handle the hardships they couldn't handle the temptations that that they were a partaker of when they followed Jesus you know, in John chapter 6, I mean Acts 6, come on, Paul, get right. In John chapter 6, it's that great chapter where Jesus is dealing with the bread. And of course, he is the bread of life. And he was talking about that. But then he goes to talk about eating of his flesh and drinking his blood. And of course, that was, that was pretty difficult for a lot to, uh, to understand. You know what I mean? And so it was hard for them. So when you get to John chapter 6 and verse number 66, it says this. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. 
They, they stopped continuing with Jesus. They said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it, Sasha? Good evening. This is really difficult to understand. This is, this is too much to bear. And so from that time, many of his disciples just went back and didn't continue with him. And so the, the question is a pertinent question. How far are you willing to go and what will it take to stop you? What about if Jesus gave you a hard saying and, uh, you know, you struggled to understand the, the, the idea of it and you struggled to comprehend what Jesus was on about and, and it was something that was a little bit offensive to the thoughts. I mean, come on, in John chapter 6, I mean, in Luke 22, we're dealing with the Passover. In, in, in John chapter 6, we're basically dealing with that as well. We're dealing with salvation. We're dealing with the Passover. We're eating his flesh and drinking his blood or the grape juice and so on and so forth. But, you know, it was, it was an assault on the offenses of these people because they thought Jesus was talking about cannibalism. And come on, let's be honest, if you and I were in their shoes, I'm just wondering how many of us would struggle with the very thought that, what are you actually saying, Jesus, to eat your flesh and drink your blood? This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. He then poses the same question uh, to his disciples, the, the, the 11 that were there, or the 12, then said Jesus unto the 12, will ye also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you 12? And one of you is a devil. So let's go back to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. So we see that, that there were some that did not continue with him. Uh, it was difficult for them. What makes this phrase in Luke 22 or this verse in Luke 22, 28 interesting to me really is dealing with the verses that are after it. You see, in verses 29 and 30, Jesus says this. He says, I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed me that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So he said, you've continued with me and, and, and here is the reward. Here's the blessing. I'm going to give you a kingdom. You're going to sit at my table in the kingdom. You're going to have 12 thrones and you're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And so therefore, when Jesus said, you've continued with me in my temptations, he was pleased about that and rewarded them uh, with their efforts, with their faithfulness in continuing with Jesus. And I'm grateful, aren't you, that the Lord has rewards. I'm grateful that when we're faithful in our service to him, our walk with him, that he doesn't let that go unnoticed. He has rewards with him. But I guess the, uh, the, the deeper thing for me is the very fact that he has now just sort of congratulated these 11 and said, you know, you've continued with me in my temptations. Here's the reward. He then says this to Simon Peter. Simon, Simon, verse 31, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. You know what's amazing to me is that here is Jesus telling the 11 now, you know, you are, the, you are they that have continued with me in my temptations. You've been faithful to me. You didn't abandon me. You didn't leave me, right? And then he gives them a reward. But then he says to Peter, Peter, you know, you're going to have your own temptations. You're a follower of me. Satan's going to come along and he's going to sift you. This is that roller coaster ride that I was talking about because sifting in that day wasn't just simply going backwards and forth. It was actually a throwing up and a catching and a throwing up and a catch. I mean, up and down. It's like that roller coaster, up and down, maybe a shake from side to side. I mean, twists and turns. And Jesus is saying, Simon, in your life, Satan's desired to have you to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith fail not. Now, the interesting thing, the intriguing thing about that is that when Jesus was taken and he was being examined, where was Peter? Well, if we go very quickly to uh, 
uh, to uh, the next few pages, uh, the next page over, he talks about in, uh, he talks about, where are we? Um, verse 56, certain maid beheld him and he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man also was with him. And he denied him saying, woman, I know him not. I don't know him. He denied him. He, he <laughs> played ignorant. I, I don't have any knowledge of him. I don't know him. And yet, you know, Jesus said, knowing what Peter was going to do, knowing what Peter was going to say. And of course, when you keep going, because Jesus said, the cock's going to crow three times, you're going to deny me. When the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. And when it happened, verse, verse number 60, it says, And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew, and the Lord turned. Now, could you imagine? The Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Could you imagine that? Just picture that for a moment. Jesus turning and just looking at him. Oh, the gaze that Jesus would have given Peter. Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him, Before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. You know, the interesting thing about all of this is that the disappointments in your life is not necessarily your downfalls. Because Jesus congratulated them knowing, Jesus let them know the rewards that they were going to have, knowing exactly what Peter was about to do. And yet he still said, before it even happened, he still said, you are they that have continued with me in my temptations and, and uh, you know, you're gonna, I'm going to give you a kingdom and you're going to sit at my table and I'm going to give you 12 thrones. You're going to judge the 12 tribes. He said all of that. And then he says, you know, Peter, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me. Oh, my. In, a, in, in another gospel, he not only denied, he cursed. He cursed and denied. And then what was the wash up? He actually left the ministry and went fishing. He left the ministry and went fishing, you know. But what did Jesus do? He knew all of that. He knew what was going to take place. In John chapter 21, if we were to go there in John chapter 21, he said, uh, you know, he, he talks about what, what was going on. And, and here is the thing, is that though Jesus prophesied Peter's future and what Peter was going to do, yet we know that through all of this that Jesus Christ is the God of the second chance. You are going to mess up. But he already knows that. He already knows that you're going to disappoint. He already knows that you're going to uh, stumble and fall into sin. He already knows that. And yet, yet for, for some reason beyond my human comprehension, he still applauds. He still gives accolade. He still says, you know what? Uh, you, you continued with me in my temptations. Here is the blessing. Here is the word. Knowing fully. That down the track, you and I are going to trip and stumble and fall. But you know, I love the Proverbs. Oh, we'll get there in a minute. Have a listen to this in, uh, in uh, where are we? In John chapter 21. In John chapter 21, verse number three. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. It wasn't working out. Things weren't happening. I've let him down. I denied him. Oh, could you imagine? Just imagine for a moment the, the struggle in Peter's thoughts. I've let Jesus down. I denied. I did exactly what I said I wouldn't go to do. He knew it. I denied him. I denied the very one who loved me. I denied the very one who saved me. I denied him. I'm, no, I'm not fit to serve him anymore. I'm not fit for the ministry anymore. I'm going back to my secular job. I'm going back fishing. Yeah, man, we're going with you. We're going with you. But notice in verse number 15, when they found out that Jesus was on the, on the shore, verse 15, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these, more than these fish, more than this, this job that you've gone back to? Do you love me more than these slimy, scaly things? You know what I mean? Like, do you love me more than materialism? Do you love me more than money? Because that all equated to money for them as a fisherman. He said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Peter, I want you to go back in the ministry. I want you to feed my lambs. I want you to feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. I haven't finished with you, Peter. 
you, you, you may have disappointed yourself, but I knew, Jesus knew, he said, I knew what you were going to do. You would have disappointed yourself, but it's not the end of the world. It's not your downfall. Listen, feed my sheep. God of the second chance. I love that. Jesus fully knowing what we were going to do. Well, you look at Acts chapter 1, verse number 13. Where's Peter? Peter's in the mix with everyone. He says, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter. First cab off the rank. Here's Peter. The one that Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you that it may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Lord, I'll die. I'll do anything for you. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll die for you, Jesus. The cock, you're going to deny me three times and then the cock's going to crow. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Self-confident, brash, Peter. Of course it happened. But where is he? First cab off the rank. Who was the one that the Lord used to preach that first powerful message on the day of Pentecost? Peter. Who was the one in the first eight chapters of the book of Acts you see prevalent in the life of the early church? Peter. Who was it that went to the, Gen uh, who was it that went to the Gentiles to Cornelius? Peter. You see, folks, let me just say, you know, even though we might have a plan and a goal, it's like, Lord, I'm going to go all the way with you. I, I, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm just going to keep walking with you. But the Lord knows. He knows. He knows the problems that we face. He knows the temptations. He knows the downfalls. And though he says to us, you know what? You are those that have you've continued with me in my temptations through the tough times, through the dark times. You've continued with me. Here's the blessing. Here's whatever it is. But however, however, so I love what it says in Proverbs 24, and let me leave you with this verse. The whole idea is this, is that, you know, so many people get discouraged and actually do drop out from continuing with Jesus because of their disappointments, because of their slip-ups, because of their stumbling, their falling, their sin. Jesus knows that. He's made provision for that. And he never took away the blessing. He never took away the, 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 the reward of what they were going to experience. I like what it says here in Proverbs 24. And maybe you know it already. It's such a powerful verse. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man, a just man. The word just means righteous. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Just man falleth. You know, it's not uncommon for the just man to fall. But as long as you don't stay down, get up. Get up. He rises up again. How far are you willing to go? I want to go all the way. That's great. That's great. And the Lord says, that's great. That's great. However, Satan desires to have you. He's going to sift you. And you're going to disappoint, you're going to get discouraged, you're going to whatever. You, you may even go back to your old way of life, your old job, whatever it is. But I haven't forgotten you. Here's another chance. And by the way, by the way, he's not just the God of the second chance. He's the God of the third and the fourth and the fifth. <laughs> it goes on, it goes on. So, brethren, I just want to encourage you with that. You know, it's noble to say, you know, we're, we're, we're going to go with you. We're going, to, we're going to follow you. Jesus may even say, hey, thanks. You didn't abandon me. You didn't leave me. You continued with me in my temptations. But, 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 hey, get up and keep going and trust the Lord. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your blessing to us, Lord. We just praise you. We pray that you'll prepare our hearts for the weekend. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless. Thanks for joining all week. Thank you for joining tonight. Pray that you have a great, a great weekend, great Sunday. I look forward to being with the brethren at Open Door on Sunday until Monday evening. God bless you. And I'll see you on Monday night. Until then, goodbye for now.